Hey everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, but you knew that. And here we are now back with part 10 of this little uh, beauty. This is the Sikorsky CH54A Tarhe from uh, ICM 135th scale and it's a beauty. And as you can see, once again, I've done a bit of work off camera. So on the back end here, you can see I've added lots of bits and pieces. You've got the drive shaft there, which is going up to the tail rotor head. We've got this little uh, actuator here, which is to change the pitch of the blades. And then we've got this here, which is the gearbox. We've got, we're going to have a drive shaft going along here. It's going to go through the hole where that tape's covering into that gearbox up to there. And that's how the rotor is rotated. Make sure you clean up the seams if you're building one of these, because you want, you want it to be a nice round tube. You don't want great big seams on there. Um, you've also got to cut that piece off the bottom in that step. But we did that before, if you remember. Um, so that's all done. There's also a little tiny piece to go on there, not forgetting that one. Uh, I've also added the undercarriage legs. I ended up not pinning them, but what I've done, um, I scraped down. There's like these tabs that go into recesses. They go into the recesses in here. So there's tabs on the undercarriage, the recesses in there. They're very shallow, but it seems like the tabs are sort of too wide, too thick, if you like. So I thinned them down and they went in a lot better. And then I put them on with white glue, gave them a good hard squeeze and then got some extra thin in there and let it really get in there. So that's going to get in there now and really sort of penetrate. And um, I've added the pipe where you can see I've added these pipes on the back here. They stick out like a sore thumb because they're still in grey plastic. And then I've added there's a pipe over here. And what I'm doing, I'm going through the instructions and I'm just looking for bits and pieces that I can get done so I can get steps finished. So as you can see, I've put like a tick here if I've done a step and it's finished. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get done. I mustn't forget to put these little tie downs on there. Um, the winch obviously isn't in there. You can see we've got a great big hole. The winch is built, but I haven't fitted it in there yet. Uh, and then um, there's a little piece there, G131, which goes up on the, on the back end. Obviously we've done all this pipe work here. And what I'm doing now, I'm looking through here, I, I, this is what I've done here, you can see I've just done all this off, off camera, and, um, and there we go. Um, obviously we've got all the rotor head done. Now we've got lots of bits and pieces going on. Now I'm trying to look at this build, and I'm going to explain my train of thought so that you guys understand where I'm coming from, because I know that some of you get a little annoyed, confused, whatever, that I'm darting through the instructions and darting about. And the reason I'm, I'm thinking about this, OK, is we've got we've got this main uh, rotor head gearbox bit. Well, it's not it's the it's the, the drive unit. It's not the rotor head. This is the rotor head. And that's the that's the bit that goes below it. What I'm looking at is if I fit that on there now, when I come to do anything with it upside down, it's going to be teetering between the tail and the rotor head. So what I want to try and do is get anything underneath done now so that I can turn it over and not have to go back underneath again. To do that I need to fit the nose gear because otherwise because we've got all this pipe where you can see what they're asking us to do is fit all these little tiny little bits and pieces. I mean here you've got you know G32, um, G32 is here and you can see it's all these little flimsy little rods and they're all just going to be so easy to snap off and it's just going to be a nightmare if we break them. You can see I've put tape over here to protect these parts from getting hooked up on something that's snapped off. But um, it's all like little spindly bits and pieces now and all these rods that go down the side. So I'm looking at kind of how we can build this without causing any damage. So I think what I'm going to do is fit the nose gear and then when we come to here, you can see you've got all this here and you've got that, that pole sticking out of there. You really don't want to be turning the model over and sitting it on there. So what I'm looking at, you come all the way back to here, you can see here, look, we've got, we've got all this detail going in, we've got a little antenna there, we've got this pipe work going in here, running down the back, and then we've got this, this step going in, and there's another piece in here, and I just want to sort of get all that in, so I don't have to work on it, up, so I can hold it upside down to paint it and everything, but I don't want to have to lay it on its back when we've got all that real flat, fragile, flimsy stuff on there because that's where it's going to get broken and it's all going to be teetering about. I know I could make a stand for it but I just can't be bothered. Um, so what I want to do is I mean this all this stuff here 
you know it doesn't need to be upside down for that to go on and that tail there I mean we, we can hold it and, and do that because it goes up under there but um so that's my that's my thought and this is why you see me darting through the instructions doing all sorts of bits and pieces and um and, and I'm sorry if it annoys you but that is why I do it and it's rather than let it annoy you you should sort of maybe perhaps think why is he doing that and maybe think of doing the same sort of things yourself there are many kits out there these days they have ridiculous build sequences this one isn't one of them this is fine but I'm just altering it a little bit but there are some kits out there where you know they will I've seen a kit recently I can't think which one it is is it that Academy A10 where they have you assemble the wing fit all the pylons fit all the weapons fit the undercarriage fit the wheels fit everything and then fit the wings to the fuselage what I mean, who, who in the world is going to do that? It's just ridiculous. So um, that's why we sort of dart around instructions and things. So anyway, um, I'm going to uh, get on and get this nose gear fitted, I think. And then we'll be able to stand it up. But I'm going to have to leave these for a few hours, um, probably 12, 24 hours, because I don't want to be standing on them with the... Uh, I mean, I can still use this, I suppose. I can still use that. Um, but I don't want to be putting it down because these pipes in the bottom here, you can see they kind of, you can see they just sit there and that antenna sticking out as well and that step. So I don't want to be damaging any of that. So I think the easiest thing to do is fit the nose gear and then that will prevent that from getting damaged. So that's what I'm going to get done next. Okay, so we've got the <clears throat> undercarriage leg here. This is again, this is the aircraft brass one. Um, as I've said before, I believe this is a must have for this kit because the this is even weaker than the main undercarriage legs because it's made in two halves so I would thoroughly recommend getting these now we've got a pin on here there is no pin on the plastic part so we need to drill a hole so I've drilled a hole in there and I managed to get it off centre like a big plank and um, so I've had to put some clearance in there I'm going to use my favourite CA glue which is the Flexi 5K CA it's not instant it takes a while to dry but when it does dry it's absolutely awesome and I want to put plenty on here and the good thing is because it doesn't dry instantly anything that comes out we can wipe away with a cotton bud just like Mr Surfacer now the this part is kind of hollow in its back face so it's kind of a bit tricky we need to make sure we get plenty of glue in there so that it's really glued in well and I'm going to glue it in so that it's kind of obviously not going straight ahead so it's going to be kind of just off right so I'm going to get all this out of the way and I can bring this over and we can work on it I need to make sure it's gone in nice and square it's not tipped back it fits into that recess very nicely very tightly as well actually so that's gone in it's up on that side so I need to push push this side down there we go make sure it goes securely into that recess without popping out anywhere I'm just going to put it on an angle so that it's obviously not straight it's come up on that side again, which is a pain. Get in there. So we can make sure when we look at it, it's vertical in both planes, and that's it, it's in there. And then we can just leave that and let the glue dry. As I say, this glue, they recommend leaving it 24 hours for full hardness, but I'll leave it for a couple of hours before I mess around with it, and then I'll be able to put it down on its legs. But uh, there's a lot of glue in there, and as I said, we can take a cotton bud. And any excess we can just wipe away because it takes a while to dry and the other thing is it has like a rubber content in it it's like a flexible it's called flexi 5 flexi 5k um, so it's not all brittle like super glues normally are but, um, as I said I can still move it around now if I want so I've got all this time to play with it but it's uh, it's nice and vertical so I'm gonna stick this back on its box and let it all dry. 
Okay, so as I said earlier, <clears throat> once we got this leg here to protect everything, we can go on and get these little bits and pieces done under here, get all the underneath work done, and then I can turn it over and run it and work on it like that. So I've got all the pieces off. Uh, these are parts G1 and G2. These are the hoses that are going to go. I'm, I'm off camera here, aren't I? These are the hoses, these two here. They're going to go around and up and, and up here. I managed to break one of them, which is which was a very silly thing to do. So um, that'll have to get put back together while it's glued on. Um, and then I've got these two leathers, G59, which is a little antenna, and then G34, which is another little antenna. They're going to go in those two holes there. So, uh, sorry, I'm still off camera. Sorry, guys. Those little two holes there. So um, let's get on and get this done. So uh, this one, the complete one, I believe is number one. I'm not going to do any glue in until I know... In fact, what I will do is just glue this end because, as we all know with these kits, sometimes, not just ICM, with all manufacturers, they can get an error in the instructions and part number one becomes, in this case, part number one becomes part number two, that sort of thing. So, to be a bit careful, I'm going to pick this up and it's becoming unwieldy and I'm so being so careful not to knock anything because so that's going to sit in there like that if that pipe will straighten out and then that's going to sit and it's fallen naturally into position so I'm assuming this is correct and then this one can go in the hole next to it in fact again I will put a drop of cement into there and then this one can go in there Turn it around. And it does actually look this could be incorrect because that angle appears to be all wrong on there. Wondering if these need to be changed around. Let's have a look. So we'll put that one in there. Oh, come on. I'll tell you, what, I'm going to do this off camera and then I'll come back and show you how it looks and I'll tell you what I've done. Wow, that was hard work. Anyway, it's done. This tape keeps peeling off. I detacked it and it's become. Completely untacky. So got those pipes in. Um, just remember, you got here G1, G2. They're the wrong way around. So um, G1 is on the right, G2 is on the left. As you're looking at it upside down. I've also fitted these two antenna. There's a little tiny one there you can see, and there's one there you can see. So um, I'm really sorry, guys. I think I've just gone off camera again. If this thing is so huge, it's difficult to keep it in camera. The other thing I've done on the back here, you can see I've wrapped around about a 10 inch length of masking tape around all this rear end. Um, there's little rods and bits sticking out and I keep sort of lifting it up and banging it into my lamp and banging it into the camera and something's going to get broken. So I've just wrapped that around there loosely just to act as a bit of protection and I would suggest you do the same when you build yours. Um, so now we have a, a helicopter that we can stand on its undercarriage. This still isn't, this has only been on there for a couple of hours. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we've now got sort of a nice, um, a nice bit of protection for all this underneath. Now I'm sort of I'm going to have a look and think what I'm going to do now because we've got some other little bits and pieces and greeblies and all sorts going on here. But of course they're going to be sticking out in the front. And they, you know, they might get caught. It's very difficult to know what to do um, because obviously once this goes on, I don't want to be turning it over as I said earlier. So. Let me have a look at the instructions. At the moment, I'm watching the rally from Croatia. Um, it's stage seven at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's Friday afternoon. So, um, I'll see you in a minute. So here we are, Saturday now, back at the bench. And um, all this undercarriage should be nice and dry now. It's had sort of good 12, 14 hours. To, well, in fact, nearly 24 hours, actually, to sort itself out. So probably about 20 hours. So the front will be good and solid. These will be good and solid. So... We're good to go. Right, I've had a look through the instructions and there are bits and pieces, bits and greeblies going literally everywhere. There's little 
tiny antenna going in here. There's pipes and cranes and winches and God knows what going everywhere. So I've decided that one of the most, what's the right word, one of the most handily tasks where I'm going to have to handle the most is doing the masking because I'm going to have to sort of hold it and get it on the right angles. So I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit these masks to the actual um, to the actual cockpit now and probably give it a coat of black primer just to sort of seal the masks in um, because if I've got little cranes and winches and bits and pieces up it's going to be impossible I can't put it down or whatever so I've decided to do that now and one thing I have done off camera I fitted these little light lenses in here uh, remember these are different this is number two and these are number one this one for some reason is like a wedge shape in the back and these are like a, a symmetrical sort of dome I've also fitted that piece there. When I took it off the sprue, it snapped in the middle. This is one of the problems with thin parts. You can see on there, we've got a sprue nib there and a sprue nib there. So as the plastic flows, it meets and it doesn't quite sort of just, it's not like a single flow. It would be much better with parts like this to have a sprue coming in at one end and going out at the other, and then you would get a constant flow. But quite often it'd be difficult to get the plastic to pass all the way through there without, um, without setting. So that's why they do it like that. But um, yeah, so these lights here, um, they're in there. What I did, I sprayed them with LP, LP48 sparkling silver and then I've glued them in with crystal clear. And as you can see, they look quite nice. Again, this is another sort of design thing. They've got the lens is the same shape as the divot in the plastic. So when you glue it in, it's sort of 100% contact. So if you don't use a clear setting glue, you're going to end up with fogging it all up. So... That's the best we're going to get with that, I think. So that's okay. We've got masks for them in here, so that's good. So we get those masked up as well. I'll have to mask the chrome on the undercarriage leg, and then um, I shouldn't take the tape off, should I? And then I'll um, I think I'll get a, like I said, I think I'll get a coat of black on here just to seal the masks in, uh, and also where I put the the uh, liquid mask here to stop it being tacky, a coat of uh, Mr. Service Rover it should help. And I think I'll probably put some tape over these bits here as well because, um, you know, when we touch it and stuff, it's going to take the masking away. But anyway, I've waffled enough. So I'm going to get these on, carry on watching me rallying, and, um, and I'll see you when that's done. So there we go. That took a while, <clears throat> but they're all on. All the masks are on. You can see we've got the, uh, the mask hole or whatever. What's it called? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mask. This one I use. Mr. Masking Solar. I like it. It's, it peels off very easily. And um, it goes on very nicely as well. So that's what I've used there. All the masks fit lovely. Um, I have a feeling these may be a touch too large. Just a touch. It'd probably be fine in the end. Um, and this one here, you can see I've just slimmed it down. Very, very difficult to mask this because I've done the inside. It kind of hides the edge. And I can see that I've probably got that one off there as well. It's um, it's very difficult to mask when you've got the grey painted inside. So I'm gonna have to move that one over. That one's too far that way, I think. But uh, yeah, it's um, and the moulding is very. The edges of the windows are very, very soft. So it's, I don't know what it's gonna like when it's painted. I hope it's gonna look okay. But um, yeah, very, very soft moulding. So very, very difficult to pick up the edges. You can see on this one here, I've actually cut it and just shortened it probably literally probably a quarter of a millimeter but just because it was overhanging the bottom but as i say i'm looking at this now it looks like i've got it too far that way so i'm gonna to have to lift it off and reapply it but uh, yeah we've got these shadows i think in future what we need to do is if we can is mask this before we fit it so we can sort of see it from the other side as well um because i think it's the gray paint that's making it so difficult but uh, I'm going to get that one moved over and then I'm going to get the whole thing sprayed black just to seal it all in and as a primer. And then I've also got the mass on the little lights there, as you can see, and down the back. You can see there, they're all done and around there. So uh, let's get that one moved over, get it painted black and then I'll come back and see you. And there we go. <clears throat> just like the New Zealand rugby team, she's all black. So all done. Uh, right around the tail area as well, got that all blacked in, um, and, and basically the whole nose, everything is painted black. So, and yes, I did remember to mask the leg up, and uh, yeah, look, looking good. And I'm really pleased with these seams all along here, or under here, or down here. Really, really pleased with how that's come out. So, um, 
it's proving to be, I mean, I just picked it up and broke a pipe. It's, uh, it's going to be a very, very difficult model to handle this. So the other thing I thought of, that I only thought of it after I'd done it, there's a benefit in this, is that when I stick all these little bits and pieces on, because there are lots and lots of little, little bits and rods and things that are going to go on, and handles and stuff, engine mounts, um, it's all going to stick out like a sore thumb because it's going to show up against the black. So at least, you know, it might give me a bit of a warning not to knock it all off, but probably it's going to be difficult to avoid. But we, um, I think we're getting to the point now where we're going to have to fit the rotor head. If you remember, I said I was going to paint all this in black. I've done that, and then I'll give it another blast over with green, so we'll get some shadowing in there. Um, but basically, we're going to have to fit the rotor head, I think, so we can get on and do this rear shaft. That's going to be a fairly major part, and then I'm going to have to be picking it up like that um, rather than like that so uh, there was method in my madness when I did all that strengthening in the back end with all the, the sprue glue and everything you know when you're picking it up back here you know the last thing you want is for it to go crack and that joint there to split open or something that'd be a nightmare so um that was the method in my madness there so basically yeah we're entering now the realms of me doing lots of assembly so I think what I'm going to do is just get on with the build and sort of come to you when there's something of any interest or just come to you when I've done a bit and say this is what I've done you know and blah 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 um because otherwise you're just gonna be sat there watching me put bits on so I think we'll get a lot of work done in this video but in a very long time for me in a short amount of time for you so uh, we'll let this black dry off fully and then we'll go from there oh and the reason it's blotchy um obviously it's just a thin coat it's just really just a coat of primer just something to get on there just to get down for the for the green to go on to um, and I'm going to be um, blotching it anyway before I spray it green so that we get this sort of uneven green effect rather than the just all one colour green. So um, I'll see you uh, when we've got some more done. OK, so I've done a bit, a few little things to talk about here. Um, these linkages on the front here, they fit absolutely beautifully. They are really, really lovely. And you can see when you look close up, you can see how they all, I'll show you in a minute because there's stuff that's just loose under it to fall off. So I'll show you in a minute close up. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to fitting these two parts here, G53 and G89, I thought I'd put them on before the, the prop shaft because I thought maybe it might be easier. And what I noticed was on this exhaust pipe, you've got this little, um, I'm, I'm assuming this is the auxiliary power unit. You've got little, you see the notches in the bottom of there and they line up with those two parts. And of course, there's cutouts in the fuselage for the little, um, little engine as well. So basically, it's worth sort of dry fitting the engine and the exhaust to make sure that everything lines up with those slots. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Um, I also, I don't remember if I showed you this before, but the ends of the exhaust look like that. OK, so on this one, I've opened it up. and You can see it's now very, very thin. It looks very realistic rather than a big chink. Uh, chunky thick piece of plastic so that's those done so we can take that APU out as well and put that back in the box so they're there now and they're dry now you can see here I fitted the prop shaft and if you remember this part here this part here is actually um, you can see it there when we go back through the instructions it's here it's, it's stage 78 it's made up of two parts and they're telling us to glue it down but there's no position for it all we've got is some missing rivets so what I've done is fitted the, the prop shaft in place and then what we can do is slide this underneath, get it in the correct position relative to the bearing and then glue it to the shaft and the fuselage. OK, so that's what we'll do there. And then here you'll notice the shaft comes in two pieces. OK, there's a join there. It's a nasty join. It's not very nice, but it doesn't matter because this cover piece goes on covers it up and then you've got this piece going over the top okay if you notice for the newer models out there everything is sprayed black inside so we don't end up with any light gray plastic showing through same under here that's sprayed black inside and I've also thinned out the plastic as well so it looks like a much thinner sheet of metal on the outside so that's going to sit on there and also on this one here this one is also thinned out and I've painted it black on the inside so um, we don't get any light grey sort of shadows, as it were. 
So that was what I wanted to say there. These prop shafts need quite a lot of clean up. They've got quite a seam line on them and there is a tiny bit of misalignment in the mould. So you need to get some clean up and get them sanded nice and round. They're basically, when you look at them end on, instead of the two halves coming together like that, they're sort of exaggerated, they're like that. So you've got you've got a seam and, you, and what you need to do is kind of scrape them and keep going round so you end up removing material so you end up you, know, you might end up with an oval but what you don't want to end up with is just a flat on the top and a flat on the bottom where you scrape the seam away so do that and then sand it off with some sponges i use the infini thousand grit and um that's all going together beautifully so um i shall carry on and see you when i've done a bit more sorry guys i should have shown you those linkages that you can see how they go they really are very very nice indeed and obviously now I'm going to have to get in behind there with the black and everything and probably paint most of that green black again. But never mind, doesn't matter. So that, I only did that because I had some green left in the brush. We've also got a fan belt there, remember, so we're going to have to paint that and probably cover it up with something. But um, Oh, the other thing we've got to do, I think I mentioned this in part 8 or 9. Um, <clears throat> this part here... Where is it? This box. Here we go. This box is going on. I mentioned it before where it says about um, put, putting it down. It, it looks like the arrows are saying to put it back there, but it's not. It's, it's telling you to put it down in the right place. But again, just like with this piece here, they're showing location tabs, but there are none. And the box is here. Where is the box? The box is here. All built up, painted inside, thin note sections again. And it goes in... It's going to go in that way round. And it's just going to sit there and again there's no location for it at all and I think I mentioned this before what I'm going to do to actually fit it is take the post wherever the post may be glue the post in position there and then slide this down over the top of the post and that will give us our position. I'm not going to do that now because I'm going to get some paint around those drive shafts first. But uh, that's what we'll be doing next. Okay, so we've got that shaft on now. As you can see, I painted it all so that it was... Uh, I knew I had paint underneath and everything. And I've also gone in and painted all that stuff in there. But I think I already showed you that, didn't I? Um, no, I didn't. Yeah, I've, all, I've gone in and painted all of this. As you can see, we've got black on the end, on the um, on the turbine. The, the, dry, the turbine? The turbine? What am I talking about, idiot? The, um, the rotor head. Where did turbine come from? Um, so that's all done now. So we've got a nice bit of black pre-shading in there. So when we go in with the green, any bits we miss will give a nice depth, a bit of a shadow. So as I said, fitting this thing here, this box here, um, I think the best way to do it is to come along with some extra thin and put a puddle in there and then glue this part in. This is... This is, where is it? Where is it you put it together? You see, what they're telling you to do in the instructions is fit this box first, and then you've got no chance of getting that to line up. There we go, it's here, it's step 119, G69, G84. They're going to tell you to put that in now, drop it down in. But because you've got no location for the actual... Um, for the actual tray itself, the box itself, you've got no way of actually getting it in. Now, what we need to do is make sure this is vertical so we can come along with a rule and we can, I can't get it in that side. So what I'll have to do is use a wider rule on the next bit. And I'm gonna try and make sure that I've got this all vertical in both planes. See, it's not bad there, a little bit out. There we go. Now, that bit on the top, a little nubbin on the top. You can see there. I'm not sure which way that's supposed to face. 
they have it facing to the side in the instruction so I'm going to give that a turn and then do the whole thing all over again I'm not I'm not sure what this is um, this could be some kind of crane mechanism for lifting off the rotor head I'm not I'm not exactly sure what it is I don't have a clue if you know and I don't mean guess, I mean if you actually know, please tell me in the comments. So there we are, so that's nice and vertical now. So we'll let that dry, let it dry nice and solid. And then when we put the box on, we can fit the box over the top. And just get it so that, because it's going to come through that square hole in the top, the rectangular hole in the top there. There you can see it and we'll just get it so that it's central, you know, equal about and just glue it down. Um, there's nothing else we can do really because there is absolutely no location whatsoever. There's some rivets missing. Once again, they've missed some rivets here to allow it to go in. I think they've missed some rivets there as well. Yeah, they have. So it's probably going to go along there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll give it a little scratch just gently. Just give it a soft sort of paint removal. And that's probably where it's going to sit. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know what's gone wrong there. it has got missed out in the tooling. But as I say, you know, when you're spending your day at the office designing a plastic model kit and you're wondering if your house is still going to be there when you get home, it can't be a very nice uh, way to live your life. I'm so sorry for them. There we go. Right, so I can leave that to dry. In fact, I'm going to put another drop in there, let that go in because I've moved it around and twisted it. So we'll just let that cure. And then um, we shall move on. Uh, drive shaft looks great. I think it looks lovely. Had to tape it down at the back. It's all sort of wanted to spring up. Um, one thing I did notice, which is a little bit of a concern, that is touching that shroud there, which it probably shouldn't do. But this is all on location. You've got location. This unit here that the drive shaft's going into, there are square cutouts here, 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 and here to go into. And there are tabs that this gearbox goes into. So there's no real way of changing it. But I'm sure that drive shaft should not be touching that shroud at the top there. So, um, I mean, we can just try and pry it down a bit. But uh, hey ho. Right, so we've also got that unit on the back to go on, haven't we? So I will remove some paint from that. And then that can go on there. You see that covers up that, that joint there. It covers it up. So there's no need to worry about fettling with that joint. And what we'll do is we'll just get some extra thin onto there, just like so. Let a capillary around. Put it on the inside so we don't get any marks. And then do the same here. And the same there. There we go. So that's on there now. And then we've got this. Where's it gone? There's a step piece. There it is. It's almost like this to me. It looks like it. In fact, I should paint that black before I fit that, shouldn't I? I should paint that black before I fit this. But that goes on there. And I reckon that's the seat they strap you to. And then they start the engines and cut your head off if you've been naughty. I don't quite know what that is. I haven't got a clue. It's probably a... I don't know. Is it, is, is it a seat for maintenance, guys? I, I don't know. Weird, isn't it? Right. So I will see you when I've done some more. Right then, guys. Welcome back. It's Sunday now. And... Um, <clears throat> I was in the hangout last night with Paul, uh, Sue and Chris, um, over on Plastic Monkey's channel, and I did a little bit of work on this. I painted the brakes, which you may have seen, and I got a lot of bits and pieces off the sprue and cleaned up. Obviously, you've got all these steps and grab rails and everything, and I wanted to make sure that all the seams are gone, because there's nothing worse than a round tube 
with a bloody great seam line around it, especially when you start dry brushing and washing and stuff. So that's all done. Um, I've also been doing some black painting. It's got the stuff prime, that's the rear rotor blades and everything, and the tail rotor blades. I've also done the um, stabilator as well. So that's all prime ready for some from work. That's going to be very, very fragile. It mounts on the back, literally on a little tab and two little tiny supports. It's going to be, you know, you're going to flick it, it'll break off. So that's going to be really, really flimsy. So that'll go on at the very late stages. So um, what are we going to do next? Well, what we've got here, I'll take this rotor head out as well. I fitted that just to see what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> We have a problem here. Now, we've got a few bits and pieces to go on that don't get coloured um, in the olive drab. I'm using this one. This is H304 olive drab, FS3487. Um, things like we've got this little uh, motor that's going to go on here. We've got the little, um, I think it's the uh, APU, it was a repair unit. And then you've got the exhaust coming out of the back of that. And obviously that's all going to be stained and everything. So they're going to have to be painted separately and put on. We've also got this heat shield that goes behind the exhaust. You can see I've started getting a metallic finish on it. That's going to sit there. And that is also not painted green. So that's going to have to go on afterwards. And then, of course, we've got the engines here. And they're going to have to go on separately, like so. Okay, so we're going to have to be really careful what we do. Now, what I do want to do, I want to get... This central piece, there's an engine mount that goes in the middle of here. It's in this bag, I think. Yes, it is. There it is. I can see it. I can see it in front of my very eyes. Come here. I can see it, but I can't grab it. There we go. So that is going to go into the fuselage. And what I'd like to do is fit that. In fact, I should have primed it black. I'd like to fit that before we start doing any painting, because what we're going to have to do now is paint from sort of here back to here um, with the green and then be very very careful with overspray and stuff not to get it um, painted with anything else because basically the engines obviously aren't painted green and I'm not going to be able to get the engine on there and then paint in behind the engine green so that's going to have to be done obviously and obviously we can't paint in there with this in place if that's going to be bare metal so it's um it's obviously looking like we need to paint all this up here green and I do really want to fit this before so that I can not have any glue marks when it goes in but what I'll probably do is just get that in there and prime it black I want to glue it in place so what I'm going to need to do is have the engines in position now the the position of the engine is dictated by this here okay so that's going to go like that now it's kind of looking like it should go further back. Unless all these mounts do actually lean forward. Because there's another mount that goes in here. Unless they do all lean forward. I'll have to check my references. But uh, something doesn't quite look right there. These are, you can see that if I put this in. To line it up, let's do the other side so I can see what I'm doing. If I put this in. Okay. That's going to pick up, which is the high side, that's going to pick up in that hole there. And it's going to lean all the way back. Oh, go in the slots, come on. It's going to fit something like that. It's going to be leaning right back, so I'm not sure if that's correct or not. So I think I'd like to get that in place, because because get, getting glue marks in there and then trying to get in there to touch it up, I think is going to be very difficult. And it's also going to be very obvious when you see it. So and that's going to fit in that one like that. So um, I think I'll go and get that done and then I'll come back. OK, so um, <clears throat> got that fitted, got it sprayed black. I've also fitted these little cylinders or whatever they are. I think they're receptacles for oil, hydraulic oil or something. Um, I really don't know what this is here. I really don't have a clue. So maybe someone can help me. Maybe it's the service bit for the winch I don't know anyway um, what I want to do now is get this all painted green now if I just go green as you can see here it's just green and it's gonna look like a toy we don't want it to look like a toy we want it to look like a model um, here is where the artistic talent comes in it's you know people use pre-shading post-shading all this and it's not really 
in some in most instances it's not really accurate but if you've got a model this big and you just paint it green it is going to look like a green toy it needs to be broken up now you can post shade so you can paint it green and then go in after with some darker lighter colors and post shade you can do what's called black basing where you do this and then you put like a, a, a very light color in little squiggly patterns and then spray the the color over the top and that gives you a it just breaks the surface up what i'm going to do is a kind of reverse pre-shading if you like and what i'm going to do is use xf76 very heavily thinned i'm, I'm going to do a little experiment I'm not, I'm not sure if i've thinned it enough in fact what we'll do is we'll test it on the bottom of here um because <clears throat> i want to make sure that it's very very thin so it doesn't spatter and stuff so i've got the air brush set at about 18 psi i've got the xf76 in here heavily thinned just blow back make sure we've got no mixture in there well nice mixture in the needle and then just come in and just gently yeah, you see this is too thick I've got you can see there's spatter around it so I'm gonna have to pour this out thin it even more so it's basically like colored thinner rather than thinned paint so I'll do that now off camera and then I'll come back okay so I've thinned the paint and reduced the pressure I'm down to about 10 psi now and it's about 80% thinner so you can see I could come in here and just do little areas just like this we've still got a bit of the uh, spatter going around but it's nothing like you can see it's more defined this is very soft this is more defined and it's the, the defining we want because when we paint over it we're going to basically hide all of it you're just going to see a witness of it and what I'm going to do um, we'll start in an inconspicuous area so it's going to take a long time and what I'm going to do is in between the riveted panels I'm just going to put a line like this if you notice, I'm not coming off the airbrush, I'm just jumping across to the next line. Just go very quickly, it doesn't matter because the paint is so thin, it won't show. You see, just doing this, just like so. It doesn't need to be perfect, it could be uneven, it could be heavier in one area than, than the next. If you keep going on and off, like if I keep doing this, if I if I went you can see it's very difficult to control but once you get your flow you just move along to the next part without actually taking your finger off the airbrush at all then you get even patterns okay there's a bit this in there so I'm just going to fill that in all right and then I can do the same up here so come along to there and as I say this is artistic license basically what we're trying to do here is make the rivet stand out as a darker area much like if you went across this helicopter with an abrasive brush it would it would change the paint in between the rivets but the rivets would prevent the brush from getting into the paint there's a panel there so we can make that stand out okay and that's all I'm gonna do all over the surface now here just put some just put something in there just so it's got so it's not all green you can see it's all varied it's not constant you got softer here sharper there and that's how you want it you do not want it to be consistent you don't want it to look like a checkerboard and then of course when we do the um, the top coat then we're going to eradicate most of it in some areas we'll probably eradicate all of it that's just part of the game I'm getting a bit of tip dry here now I'm using <clears throat> Tamiya XF76 as you know with Mr. Color Leveling Thinners and I'm surprised I'm getting tip dry but uh, it is quite warm today so I guess that's not helping get into there as you can see bits and pieces in the way is making it more tricky but it doesn't need to be perfect it can be as rough or as neat as you like preferably you want it quite rough all I could have done here is sprayed the whole thing in a light color and then gone over all the rivets with a darker color which would be how you pre-shade an aircraft on its panel lines okay, we can also do some on here just to sort 
sort of make the, the casing look a little bit more interesting. Like the top of that there. Some in there. Some in there. Get some on there. As you can see already, it's looking, you can see that that casing there, where I've done that pre shading, already looks a lot more interesting than just green, you know. So, and this applies to any model you're building whatsoever. You don't have to do it this way, you can do random squiggle patterns, you can do anything you want. It's your model, you do it how you want. I'm just showing you how I'm doing this. I have another model I do, I might do it completely differently. Now the other thing we need to be mindful of here is that when we come to spray the sides we're going to want to do this again. So if I finish here, if I just do this Okay, and if I finish there, when I come to do this, I'm going to get overspray onto the green. So what I'm going to do here is do these panels here. Just like so. Okay, and then when I come to... I'll just be painting green. I won't be painting this colour and getting this colour onto the green. Okay, so we obviously don't want to paint the whole thing because we've got to handle it and put lots of little bits and pieces all over it. But I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to have any risk of overspray going on the green. So we'll come down here, we'll go down the side. Be a lot lighter down the sides because it won't be as pronounced. Okay, so we can just... A light amount of colour in there, nothing too much. So obviously the upper surfaces will be more affected than the vertical surfaces, or sorry, any horizontal surface will be more affected than any horizontal. So there you go, we can see we've got that effect going on there. And I can tell you now that the camera is making it look a lot more pronounced, it's really picking up on the green. And that's my final point, is colour. If you want this to be very, very subtle, you could use a slightly lighter green. If you want it to be really, really in your face, you could use white or yellow. Um, I'm using this colour because I want to... I want to have a subtle effect. I'm not going to be weathering the hell out of this. I'm just going to be doing a subtle weathering job on it. Just soften those up a bit, a bit harsh. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do a big weathering job on it. I'm just going to be... A little bit of staining, a little bit of streaking here and there. But uh, there we go. So I'm going to carry on, do the rest of this upper surface. I'll go down the sides, make sure we're not going to get overspray anywhere. And then I'll come back and show you how it looks. And there we go. All done. I decided to do the whole thing, actually, to reduce the risk of getting that overspray on the green paint. So I've appreciated the whole thing. As you can see back here, it's a bit motley on the sides because I don't want it to be so obvious. Uh, on the top, it's more obvious. And on the sides, again, it's motley. As I say... The camera is making this look black and white. In reality, it's very, very subtle. Uh, you can see there around the cockpit and underneath, very, very subtle indeed. Obviously, just make it a bit more interesting, but it wouldn't have had any bleaching or rubbing or anything like that. You can see here a bit of variation between the top and the, and the bottom at the front. You can see I rolled it away. A little bit on the frames as well. Don't forget them. And as you can see, once it's painted, it's going to look great. It's the top of these little pots here, they've all been done. And then I've also done this ring that's going around the top of the rotor. We've done the top of the radiator housing bit there. We've done the air intakes that are going to go here. Sorry, there. They're going to sit there so you can see they've been done. Obviously, well bleached those corners. We've got the uh, stabilator done there. It's going to sit on the back. And um, yeah, I even did a little bit on the rotor head. So you can see there we've got a little bit of blue shading on the roads ahead that's just going to make it look a little bit more interesting. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, as I say, guys, this is not the only way to go about this. And also, please bear in mind before you start, um, this looks very, very pronounced on the camera. What I'm looking at on the screen is nothing like what I've got in front of me. It almost looks like white, doesn't it? It's not. It's very subtle. Um, so, 
there we go so we've now got that done and remember when you are doing this the top is going to be your heaviest and then as you go down the sides make it softer and softer until you get underneath where there's practically just a little bit of straight I mean this I can hardly see anything on the bottom and on the camera it looks mad at mad <laughs> um, anyway so there we go so I've got to get on now and get this here all painted green and um, and then we'll be ready to push on I'm going to need to get some more detail painting done there's a lot a lot of bits that are going to go on here that are going to make it very very flimsy there's there's two little arms that go here that just little pitos that just stick up there you, you're going to touch them and they're going to break off so um, it's going to be a very very careful process now thinking of how we're going to go the assembly sequence I don't even bother I think I'll even bother looking at the instructions um, but uh, as you can see that there is just ready to be snapped off as is this so um, there we go okay so now we've got the all the shading done we're gonna look at getting some green paint down on this upper area I'm gonna bring a bit down the sides as well um, <clears throat> and we'll get all this area done and then we can go on and get the engines on we can get the APU painted up get that fitted various other bits and pieces we've got that heat shield to go in there as well before the engine goes we mustn't forget that and I've got to do some more metal work on that because at the moment that doesn't look very metallic does it It just looks like a gunmetal grey piece of plastic so um right so what I've done this is the 304 from Mr Hobby now this was already thinned a little bit because I thinned it a bit because uh, it was um it was going off it was a very thick so I've thinned it down so I've thinned it some more I've made up another jar I've got an old Tamiya jar never throw your old jars away always wash them out um and then I've made up this this mix I don't want to tip the jar over obviously because it will all come out but you can see in there it's pretty thin and what I do you'll see people will say oh use the consistency of milk and all that what I do if you look on the side of the jar here I hope you can see it um, what I do I'm gonna get the brush okay and I'm gonna just and you can see that when the when I put the paint up it kind of remains opaque but it runs away it's not like coloring it and that's what I want for airbrushing and the reason I do it that thin is purely because we've got the pre-shading then and we want the pre-shading to show through now I'll show you in a minute I'm, I'm gonna do some spraying on camera you will you'll be excited about that um, but basically what we want to do is we want to build it up we don't want to just go over and just obliterate all the pre-shading if we didn't have it thinned enough so I'm gonna build it up and let the pre-shading show through and just keep going and what will happen the thinners, the leveling thinners in there will kind of burn through all this and it will bring it out. So if you, you'll notice it may sort of disappear and then it will come back. But we want a very, very subtle look. Now I've got to make sure yeah, Jess is here. So I'm going to have to do this very quickly. I don't want her breathing this in. Um, so I'm going to pour some in the airbrush. Just like so. Never fill your airbrush right up. Because you can guarantee you'll spill some down the side and splatter it all down the nozzle. So I've got that there. And as I say, I mean I've mixed this, it may be too thin, it may be too thick, but I think it's probably just about right from experience. So just do a little test on the cloth. Yeah, that's okay. I've got a rag here, I can just check the flow is good and everything. And then we can come along here. That's good, Jess has just run out of the room. Brilliant. Um so we can basically come along and start to add some colour, and you can see. That it's very in fact what I'll do I'll, I'll do it up here so it's easier for you to see I'll just do this patch here so I'm gonna do this and I'm going in circular motion so I don't get lines I don't want to do it in tram lines and what you will notice is the the light green behind will show through but it's becoming more subtle Okay, so you can probably see that and no doubt the camera is going to make it look a lot worse than it really is yes it is it's really really picking up on it so what I'm going to do is just move around here and just do a bit more and what will happen is it will start to come back the I may be able to obliterate the pattern but it will start to come back and if you notice I'm not going on and off with the airbrush because I don't want spatter keep the airbrush going and you can see we've got this kind of uneven blotchy look to it which as I say the the camera is making it look a lot worse than it really is and as you notice I'm not going in 
straight lines, I'm not doing any pattern, I'm just going in circular motions all over the place because I want an uneven look. I don't know if you can see that there, obviously the camera is making it look a lot worse than it really is, honestly. So um, I'm just going to go on and get the rest of this area done. And I'll keep the camera on because I know some of you like to see it. If you don't want to see it, then just switch off because I'm going to get this done and then pretty much call it a day for this video, I think. Because we're probably on around about the hour now. Getting there anyway. Okay. So you see there we can, this is the great thing about having this box. I'm not putting any strain on the undercarriage, pulling anything about. We just got to make sure we come in from the angles to get the, to make sure we get all sides. We don't want any black shadows. Well, we do, but we don't want black shadows where there's no paint. Because I've purposely, you know, I accidentally missed it out. So in this engine area is going to be tough because we've got a lot of bits and pieces to get around. And this is why, guys, I like to get everything sprayed black first, because... As you can imagine, if anything gets left, if anything gets missed, it's better to have a black patch on a rod than a light grey plastic patch. You see, we come in there. Okay, so you get the idea, I'm just basically painting everything green so that we can get on and get some major assemblies in place. And I'm also going to go down the sides because it's going to make it a lot easier. So spraying straight at the moment, as I say, no no continuous lines, no, no strict pattern to it. We don't want tram lines, we don't want streaking. We need to make sure we're getting all the angles. In fact, I may as well do this whole side, haven't I? As you can see, I'm just... Let's see if I tip it up sideways. As you can see, I'm just random patterns, random sort of spattering, making sure we get in all the angles so we don't get any shadows behind those brackets. And there we go. And now you can see why I did all this with the sprue goo and everything, getting everything strong, because I can pick that up now, I can shake it around, turn it over, it's not going to cause any issues whatsoever. And there we go. So you can basically see now how I do this, I'm trying to get this sort of interesting effect of motley colours. And I would do this on any Vietnam era helicopter just to add some interest to it. I believe all this is green, but if it's not, we can do some detail painting afterwards. But I'm sure. Like the whole model is just green. Other than the engines and the APU, I think everything is green. And be careful when you look at your references, guys. I, I found one reference, I don't remember which museum it's from, but some of it looks green and some of it looks like this sort of brownie green colour. Well, what you're seeing is the brownie green colour is the original Vietnam paint faded and chipped off and peeled off and everything and completely knackered really. The bright green is what the museum's put on, it's actually the wrong colour, it's too green. So it's a later colour green, in fact I don't think it's even olive drab to be honest. 
So be very, very careful with museums, guys. They can really send you down the garden path. Especially with cockpits and stuff on flying aircraft because they often have incorrect instrumentation for the period to get them clearance to be able to fly. And also, like with the likes of uh, Jess Jane the Lancaster, be very careful about the marks because Jess Jane is a mark. Oh God, my mind's gone black. Is it a six or a seven? Um, and many features of the aircraft are nothing like you'll see on a one or a three, which is pretty much what all wartime lengths were, ones and threes. So be very careful of that. So there we go. Now you can see that there, and that is. Quite an interesting effect. Um, just looking at the camera, it kind of looks a bit more subtle, but in real life, that is that is great. It, it sort of really, really brings it to life instead of just being this green blob. Um, I'll try and do some nice photos of it when it's done, and then you'll see what I mean. But I'm just going to do some more here just to use up the paint. Because it's Sunday afternoon and Jess and I are off to the pub. So he enjoys going to the pub now on a Sunday. We have a couple of beers, come on. And then I get back over there, get some takeaway or whatever, maybe come home, go on with ice cream, who knows. Take each day as it comes, in it? There we are. There's our motley, motley green finish. And if we don't like it, we can always just go over it and completely obliterate it. We could pre-shade it with some black on the rivet lines rather than off the rivet lines do anything you want it's, it's that's the beauty of doing stuff like this it's, it's not it's not like a car body you're not after a perfect finish you want an uneven blotchy sort of irregular finish I'm just using the paint up now gone. So there we go, we got everything done that we wanted to get done. So now we can get on with putting our engines in and stuff after I've done some more metal work. So I'm going to get the airbrush cleaned up and I'm going to call it a day for this part. And uh, this is part 10 isn't it? And um, I'll see you back for part 11. What I'll probably do off camera in the meantime is um, get all these bits and pieces fitted and primed up and everything. And then we'll be looking at getting the build complete. We may even finish it in part 11. Probably be going to be 12, 13. But because uh, we've got a lot of building to do. But we've got... I mean, the only parts I've got left now are these little three antenna that are going to go on the fuselage. And what's in here? So we're pretty much done, guys. We're pretty much finished. Obviously, we've got this stuff here as well. But uh, we're pretty much done. So I'll see you back for part 11. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I certainly have, and uh, it's really nice to see it starting to come together, And um, but it's a lot, a lot of work. But boy, is it worth it. See you soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.